Good evening everyone, it's Christine here and I'm here to share an update on how I'm creating my wall panels for Roxy's Journal of Stitchery down the garden path where I'm combining some of my individual pieces that I've created for the prompts or combining a couple of prompts um, and then turning them into some larger wall hangings that can go on the cupboards in my craft room. So there's a separate video on um, this piece but I will give you an update on it tonight because I've added another element for the most recent prompt of a birdhouse or bird bath. I've actually got both elements to add into that one. Um, but I wanted to show you this one because you haven't um, seen this one and I've just been working on it today to get it ready to take on holidays with me so I can work away on all the stitching while um, we're on our sort of 10 or so day holiday because I hate going away without um, something crafty to do but I couldn't take boxes upon boxes of fabrics um, and embellishments and goodies with me um, this time we're on more limited space in the car and so it um, is going to be really good just to have this panel and this panel plus some threads um, probably some beads a few buttons some laces and stuff but not um, boxes upon boxes so anyway, let's get into it. So this piece um, will be on the, um, the second piece. Um, and the first piece will be headed down the garden path. And this piece will have of my mind's eye up the top. So it's really the, the gardens of my imagination. And that's why I'm really happy to be then collaging the background with a variety of um, different, different fabrics. So it's almost like in your imagination, images kind of blur into each other. And there's a whole range of things that, that come into play. I still want to keep the, the pieces, um, I guess, yeah, in focus and really have the fabrics around them complementing the colours and transitioning between the different pieces. It also gets past the issue that all my pieces are from a different sort of perspective. So like this chateau piece is looking down and across um, and then you'll see the next piece is kind of looking frontwards on at something. So by separating them but then unifying them with the, the fabric collage, I think it's going to work really well. So I'll just move this one a bit out of the way. So up the top, I've got just a beautiful um, lace work um, piece, vintage um, blue. It's um, sort of translucent. And so you can see the lovely um, fabric underneath, which is a nice sort of floral imprint. Um, it's an old bed spread, that, a vintage bed spread that I got. Um, so I've used that because it had a few stains on it. So I was happy to cut that up and use that as my base. It's also got a nice heaviness, um, but it's still very stitchable through. So it's going to be really good um, to use and it will just have a nice weight when it's, when it's hanging because it has to be able to, I guess, support um, some of my, my pieces. So there's videos on each of the creations of the individual pieces. So I won't go into them too much, but this was my... Um, inspired by Chateau de Villandry in, in France, um, which has a most amazing um, vegetable garden. And then I've also um, turned the back section of the garden into a water garden with a fountain and then um, ponds and then a lovely sitting area. So this is all stitchery um, onto an image that I transferred um, from paper. Um, so it's got more of a, I guess, a canvas um, feel to this one, but I just love the detailed stitching that I've been able to do. All the beading, all the trees are, are beaded. I've got some stump work um, combined in. So that was a lot of fun. So I wanted to use background pieces that were blues. That's why I started with the blue, I guess, for the sky, but also just sort of merges back from the piece. Um, this is a piece of um, a synthetic, which I don't generally like stitching with, but I do have some beautiful synthetic pieces of fabric from the reverse art truck, which I love looking at. So I figured putting them on the, um, the wall hanging will mean I get to look at them, but I don't need to do that much stitching and they're not as suitable for sort of smaller stitchy projects. But where I can fold their edges over and stick them underneath other things, I think they'll work, they'll work out fine. Now, something I like to do when I'm transitioning from one piece of fabric to another is to soften the edge between the fabrics by using things like lace. Now, this was from one of my recent vintage antique um, hauls of goodies. It's where I got just a massive boxes upon boxes 
of goodies and they're actually still sitting out in my craft room I haven't put them away in boxes yet so I've been actually drawing quite heavily from them to start using them which is great um, and this one just had a little um, little mark on it which doesn't worry me at all um, but it's just yeah it's gorgeous I am keeping it in its entirety when I um, sew it I will stitch it on in its entirety I won't be cutting into this one but there's a few features that I really like about this um, is that it's got this geometric element which actually ties in beautifully with um, the gardens and with this little peak point um, in the design of the chateau gardens I also like that this edge actually lines up nicely with this um, garden bed that runs across. So I just felt that was the perfect positioning. And the great thing is it just really softens down this edge where I'm transitioning between two different fabrics. Um, and then it just gives that interest where you can see um, the fabrics through, through it, but it's like they kind of morph into each other without you knowing where that actually occurs and it's kind of also creating a nice little I guess because yeah this is the section of the um, well the front section of the vegetable garden so it kind of draws your eye across there and then you can kind of take some further further segments as you as you look at it and I'm quite happy as well um, to leave this more raggedy edge on um, the lace I just think that adds interest to our, our slow stitch pieces so let's move down then Sorry, and you'll have to put up with a bit of um, arms and other bits coming into the into the images. So moving down, we come from this lace piece then into this lovely um, beaded bird and butterfly scene. So this was for the prompt of a, a glass house or a, a greenhouse. And I decided to do a bird and butterfly house because I love birds and butterflies. This was an amazing piece of antique um, bead work that I found in the op shop on another holiday when we were up in Bright. Um, it was from the Myrtleford op shop and it is just swoon worthy, just so gorgeous. And um, it was right when I was been working on this piece and I happened to be going doing a haul video. I got it out and I just thought, oh, I'll have a look how it looks with a piece. And it just fitted so perfectly across here. And I just absolutely fell in love with it and stitched it down. And when I found it in the shop, it was all sort of scrunched up in this little zippy Ziploc bag. It looked nothing, but once it was stitched down, it was just perfect and it was in perfect um yeah condition I thought it might be kind of a bit loose but as soon as it was stitched down it's like it's made made for the piece and it's going to preserve something that was incredibly gorgeous but was at risk of just falling to the bottom of a basket in an op shop and never being never being loved and this one has all sorts of other really gorgeous vintage laces on it now the fabric I've put alongside that one um, I've chosen it because it has some of the blues which was um, what we're transitioning down from. Um, as you would have seen in this piece as well, we had the greens. So it's got those, those elements. And then it's introducing in the browns and the golds, which are in the background of this piece, as well as in the actual, um, the central piece as well. So I'm being really mindful in choosing my colors that help me transition the eye down the piece. And again, this lace works really well with these. So it also ties um, the upper section then in with, with this section. Then next up, and it's all just pinned down. So I will have to sort of make sure all the things are sitting upwards and the bits that I want on the top are on the, on the top when I'm actually stitching it together. But I just like to make sure I'm happy with sort of um, how it's all hanging together and that I have the fabrics that I want to have given I'm not going to be taking away my boxes of fabrics these are the fabrics I'll have to to play with as well as anything I might find in the op shops up there I believe there's two op shops in town where we're going um, we're going to a, a lovely little seaside town at the end of the road so it's relatively um, remote it doesn't have anywhere that you go to after it um, and it's a ways from from other places but there are two op shops in town. I visited one of the op shops previously. I, I didn't even know there was a second one. So I'll be excited to have a little, little poke around. So what you can then see um, is that we then 
Oops. Transition. Transition up. Um, sorry, transition down into then um, my tree of life. And so I wanted to then um, use the softness of this. And this is one of those gorgeous um, floral fabrics from the reverse art truck but it's one of those um, synthetics, so not so nice to, to sew with. I haven't really used it in anything, but I admire it. I touch it um, and I just love the, love the floral design. Um, and I wanted something quite soft behind the Tree of Life. And I've again, just transitioned colors from the previous piece of fabric, which had some of those greens, the blues, some of the yellowy, yellowy browns, but then thinking about what I wanted to then transition down to below. And so I decided to just, um, and I also wanted something that was a, a sort of a whitey rather than a cream because I've got um, my Tree of Life stitched on this beautiful vintage um, napkin, which even has this lovely little bit of embroidery down the bottom. So I've kept just a whole piece. There's nothing stopping me down the track of adding some other embellishments around, but I quite want this one to, to stand a little bit, um, sort of stand out a bit. Very pleased with how the Tree of Life ended up. And then we transition down into the bottom piece, which is my garden show piece. I'll just pull that down a smidge. Um, so again, I've continued that piece of the floral down, but then started to integrate it into the, the floral um, that sits down the bottom here. So I'll just pull it up a smidge. Just pull the camera up a little bit more. Sorry for that. Um, and so it comes down then into, and it's a slight change in color of fabric so I'll probably end up putting a lace or something across that then sort of sinks in with where the line is on the roof of the garden show house um, and I wanted some really um, out there sort of pinks and um, really play up to this beautiful piece again of this fabric from the reverse art truck um, I just yeah I just love the out there bright um, flowers and I thought because the design's got quite a bit of um, blues in it but it's also got these pinks it would be lovely to bring in those really vibrant pinks um, and still have some of those blue and, and green elements and again I was just looking with that piece above it to match in with the the sort of the sky element of, of this piece and then transition down. Now I'll just pull it up a smidge as well. So down the very bottom a bit further down the very bottom I've um, brought in this piece which was from an old um, cut bit of an embroidered tablecloth it unfortunately um, went in a wash with something that released some pinky colors into it so it's actually got a sort of a, a pinky tinge to it but I think it's going to be perfect here because it's got then the pink elements around it and it's then got the dimensional sort of texture element underneath it of this um, doily sort of place match um, crochet doily that I'm going to have sitting, sitting underneath it and almost giving that sense of the, the foreground. So it's got, I don't know if it's meant to be a sundial or a bird bath. I'm going to call it a little bird bath, given that was a prompt for, the, for this week. But I just love it. And it was always going to be too big to go into one of my Roxy Journal of Stitchery pieces, but it's just the right size to go across the, the base of this panel. And that will all get sort of, yeah, stitched down and amalgamated together. So at the moment, when you probably look at things on here, because they're not stitched down, um, the piece isn't all sort of hanging together, but you've got to go through this stage. You've got to pin, get it pinned down. And then as you start to stitch it, and if you do some canther stitches or other stitches across it, it will all unify together and all become one. Um, so I'm really excited to yeah get these pieces going together. Um, let me now show you. Oh, and with this one, I've just left 
um, the little doilies hanging um, off the bottom because I think that will just give a lovely little textural element at the, the very base. And again, these beautiful um, flowers, they were vintage or antique flowers that I picked up um, from the op shops on one of my previous trips. And I think I've, I don't even can't remember where my crinoline lady came from. This beaded piece is from my partner's mum. Um, it's just a gorgeous piece of beading on a, on a piece of backing. So that's that piece. Oops, a bit of fluff. I'll just move that over. And then I'll just give you a quick update on this piece, which really hasn't changed um, a great deal. But we have added in, we, I say, me, <laughs> me has added in um, the bird, the little bird houses. Oops, I've just noticed a needle, uh, not a needle, a pin had come loose. So I've just grabbed that. You hear those birds outside? There's some that just go flying over in the evening and they make a make a huge raucous. But it's always nice to hear the birds. Now let me just pull it pull it up a smidge. So um, I had this fabric that had little bird houses on it, and I'd actually used it in one of my other pieces last year for Roxy Journal of Stitchery for the Christmas journal where I'd made myself an advent calendar in which I can keep some of my precious buttons from my nana and I'd use each of these bird houses as one of the little um, pockets in which to keep um, my buttons and so yeah as soon as I heard the prompt of a birdhouse I thought yeah I've got to incorporate um, some of that fabric in rather than just adding a birdhouse to one of my pieces and so I had a look for where the colour scheme of the fabric would work and where it could work as a nice little sort of um, part of the, the transition and I thought it would be perfect here because the fabric's got a greeny yellow um, background on it it's got some reds it's got some um, then some deeper greens and, and blues so I thought it would fit really well with this little piece I guess it's a bit funny having having your cats together with um, with birds but these are these are bird loving cats that's what they are they're just all happily living living together in the garden and then there's a little bird nest down here so I guess it makes sense to have have all of that together so that's just an addition I've made to to this piece um, just in case you hadn't seen the other video, but you can see it in much more detail on that. Um, again, just, yeah, lots of lovely transitions, but this one's a much um, darker, richer, richer colours. And then the piece that I was just showing you is a much um, brighter and lighter piece. Um, I just love this bottom, bottom piece with my, my robin and the key from my, my grandpa, the secret garden key it was such a fun piece to to create and I'm just so excited to get all of these um, stitched down and stitched together and that it is going to be a compact um, project that can can fit in the car so I won't keep you um, too much longer I will get on and um, get these all rolled up um, I'll pick out what threads I need to take and then I'll have a think if there's a couple of other little projects that I might bring away with me that I can also um, share some videos on, hopefully. So thank you, everyone. Um, thanks again for everyone's um, support and comments and subscri subscribing. Um, you're all just such a, a lovely bunch and you do make my, make my day with your, your comments. And it's just really lovely getting, getting to know you all. So thank you. Take care. Hope you're having an absolutely wonderful weekend. Bye, everyone.